Welcome to this short video preparing us to prove Menelaus' theorem. You'll recall that when we were looking at this construction and using GeoGebra, we made a conjecture that the product of the walk-around ratios equaled 1. Now because our conjecture involves ratios, we should recognize that we need to look for similar triangles. And in order to form similar triangles, we'll need to draw an auxiliary line that's parallel to a side of a triangle. So, suppose that we drew a parallel here. That's actually not a good choice, because it would break C into pieces, and our formula already has C in its entirety. So, how about we drop the line down a bit, still parallel to the bottom, but, again, we run into a problem. Now we've chopped up the segment of length A. Alright, let's keep trying. How about this? No, you say? No, because the segment of length F would be broken into pieces. How about here? Nope. Same problem as before. Oh no, this is making me a little nervous. So, let's slide the segment to the right. Here. Hmm. Here? Oh my goodness, I think this one works. We haven't broken A, B, C, D, E, or F. Okay, so now we're cooking. Let's label some of these new segments, and let's color code pairs of congruent angles. And anytime we have two angles with two pairs of matching angle colors, we have similar triangles. So, here's a pair of similar triangles. Now, we will have to label this side that was unmentioned before. Let's call it J. So, with these similar triangles, we can write proportions for corresponding sides. Thus, we know that B is to G as C is to D and as J is to H. Here's another pair of similar triangles. Its associated equation of proportions is A is to G as F is to E as JHI is to I. As we look at these two sets of equations, we notice that many of the lengths that are represented in our conjecture that we're trying to prove are also in portions of our work. So let's focus on these green boxes in particular. If we cross multiply, we see that B times D equals G times C, and that A times E equals G times F. Let's isolate the one value that we don't need. Let's isolate G. In fact, let's isolate the G in both equations. Because then, we can set BD over C equal to AE over F. And once again, we can cross multiply. This results in B times D times F equals A times E times C. And now I'm going to stop. Can you take BDF equals AEC and using algebra finish the proof showing that A over B times C over D times E over F equals 1? Can you bam it? <laughs> 